What do we have here? A table. No, a very impressive table, but a table nonetheless. Oh, we've got a towel, got a cup of wine, and some bread. Well, these will be important elements of our discussion today from the Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 12. Uh, let me get my notes here. <clears throat> For you people who don't like videos, I'll post the notes too and you can take a look at those. So, <clears throat> today, our verse is verse 12. It says, While the king was at his table, my perfume gave forth its fragrance. This is a great passage. So, the scene has changed. Now, the king is at his table. We already know in the, the beginning of the book, he has drawn her into his chambers. So maybe the table is a, is a place in his chambers. But while the king, Jesus, is at his table, something happens. But first, let's just think about the king's table. It uh, obviously conjures images of the communion table. It makes us think of when Jesus was at the table with his disciples and he girded himself with the towel and he went and he washed their feet. It makes us think of how that night, the night he was betrayed, he took the, the bread and broke it and he took the cup and blessed it. How he broke his own body and gave it to them for their healing. How he poured out his own blood and gave it to them and to us for our forgiveness. We can't help but thinking about those things when we think about the Lord's table. And I believe we should. We should think about the king's table like that. So while the king was at his table, doing these things, washing the feet of his loved ones, pouring himself out, laying himself down, while this is all going on, something happens. She says, my perfume gave forth its fragrance. It's almost like her perfume has a will of its own. It doesn't say, I gave forth the fragrance of my perfume. She says, my perfume gave forth its fragrance. It sounds like it's, it's irresistible. Like what he has done is drawing something out of her. Almost like it can't be stopped. Her perfume gives forth its fragrance. This reminds us of Mary with the alabaster vial and how when Jesus was at the table, she came and she broke it and she anointed him and the fragrance of the perfume filled the entire house. That fragrance was given forth. Remember in verse 3, when we talked about Jesus' oils, how his oils have a pleasing fragrance, how his name is like oil poured forth. We talked about it being his essence, who he is, that he has not bottled himself up, but he's given himself out to us. And we have experienced the fragrance, the essence of who he is, and it brings true pleasure to the human soul to experience Jesus. But now, we're talking about her essential oil. We're talking about her perfume. Now that she has experienced his essence at the table, his body, his blood, his servanthood, him being poured out for her, he's now going to experience her essence, her perfume, her essence begins to be poured out. She begins to give herself to him. That's how it works. First, God gives himself to us. Then, we find ourselves giving ourselves to him. He always initiates. We can't do anything that God doesn't start. We can't. Her perfume, the essence of who she is, begins to give its fragrance. She's letting him in. She's letting him know her. She's letting down her guard and she's starting to be herself 
in his presence. She's starting to give him the one thing that only she can give. Her heart. I want you to get this sequence here. It's real important. First, Jesus gives his heart to her. Then, she begins to give her heart to him. Beloved, Jesus gives his heart to you first. And then and only then are you able to begin giving your heart to him. It's true that Jesus has already given his heart completely. He's totally poured out. He hasn't reserved any of himself. He's given himself fully to us. Yet, only to the measure that we receive the gift of his heart are we able to give back the gift of our heart. You've got to receive his heart. A gift that's given but not received is a gift that's not enjoyed. Is that not true? We've got to receive the gift of Jesus' heart before we can start giving our hearts back to him. We've got to let him love us. We've got to let him pour himself out on us. We've got to let him tell us how much he loves us over and over and over and over again and just see what happens. You'll find your heart beginning to give itself back to him. It'll be effortless. Well, you're not convinced yet? There's only one way to find out. Spend some time at the table. Take some time, practically, in prayer, sit down and think on these things. Take out some of these scriptures, like when he's at the table washing his disciples' feet, breaking the bread, pouring the wine, or Mary at the table breaking that vial, pouring it out. Take some of these passages. Think on these things. Read them. Pray them. Sing them over yourself. Sit at the king's table and soak in his love for a while. Watch him wash your feet, break the bread, pour the wine, and just see what happens.